Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Challenges as opportunities. I want to tell a real life story involving the two young gatekeepers in the apartment complex where I live. Ibrahim and Yusuf, they are both in their 20s. Ibrahim is the longest serving gatekeeper in the house. He's dedicated to his gatekeeping and if asked, he gladly takes on any petty tasks from many of the residences. He earns 30,000 Naira a month. Yusuf, on the other hand, is everything Ibrahim except that on daily basis, he washes all the cars on the premises. It's a six apartment block with the entire ground floor as parking space. When full, there are nothing less than 20 cars. Yusuf knows the usual schedule of each of the cars, and he plans his washing accordingly. At a conservative 500 naira per car per week, Yusuf nets nothing less than an additional 10,000 naira per week. Effectively, while the other guy, Ibrahim, earns just about 30,000 naira salary monthly, Yusuf earned 70,000 minimum, made up of 30,000 salary and an additional 40,000 from washing cars, a captive market with no competition. The first time Yusuf went home and someone relieved him, I thought Ibrahim would automatically step in his shoes and take up the 40,000 naira that is on the table. But it did not happen. Ibrahim never washes a residence car packed unless specifically asked. On the flip side, Yusuf washes all cars, asked or not. They are both about the same age. Here's another one. Sometimes in 2018, a friend had told me he was desirous of investing a maximum of 500,000 each in a portfolio of micro businesses by young people. To be eligible, interested in the visuals, were to share the business idea in a one-pager summary and sent to him for review. I share this information on a couple of platforms with a lot of young people. I was stunned that on a particular platform with about 50 young people, there was not even one response. Meanwhile, most of them were unemployed graduates who still depend on uncles and aunties for airtime and data. I must say, however, that the initiative was eventually oversubscribed by some other young people. So here is the question. What created the difference between some young people who have a nose for opportunities and shoot for them and a significant number of others in the same age group who sit there waiting for fortune to drop on their laps? Could it be a gap in the education system which emphasizes churning out job applicants without paying attention to also producing entrepreneurs? Obviously, that was not the case with Ibrahim and Yusuf as both are uneducated. Could it be the fear of failure or rejection? Or a general hostile business environment? Maybe it's a mix of several factors. Whatever the problem may be, I would like to advocate that all agencies of government and civil society organizations with mandates for youth should engage more actively in connecting young people to the opportunities represented by our challenging and chaotic environment. Challenges are opportunities to provide solutions for a reward. Yeah, um, the difference is that um, in, there are some youth that are naturally lazy, that you can't take it away. There are some who are just contented, you know, they are comfortable where they are. They don't want to shift, 
you know, forward, backward, sideways. They are just okay there. with what they have. And, and so, why there are some who believe, yes, I will get extra from uncles and aunties, so why bother? And then they begin to, they're looking for huge cash. Nobody's ready to work for the little ones. They don't know, there is no orientation that you need to start small also. So they see somebody driving a big car, they just want to drive that kind of big car. And then, thanks to, you know, the government in us, he calls you, ah, uncle, please, so, um, um, I need 10,000, uh, you see, I don't have much, don't worry, I'll send you five. By the time he goes around five uncles, that's 25K. So why would, no, no want to wash, why would he want to wash car <laughs> for you when he can get 25,000 by reaching out to uncles? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we have this attitude of, oh, give, the Lord will give back. Or you're not helping, that my uncle is too wicked, or that my auntie is too wicked. So these are some of the issues, these are some of the challenges. And then naturally, our orientation and our ideas of uh, always reaping where we didn't sow. Government will do it. Individuals will do it. And there is no mentorship for hard work, that hard work pays, that you need to work to earn a living. Mm. Take um, um, those days, you finish your secondary school long holidays, you are meant to work somewhere. There mm -hmm. are jobs waiting for you, but Holiday it still, jobs, yes, it still happens gap. abroad. You work in internship in, and yeah, also even here. in, in um, yeah. um, um, what do you call it, um, eateries, and you know. But here, none yeah. of them in his existence. And then somebody who left the village a few days ago, like you see in home videos, he goes to Lagos, and then the next thing is prospering. He's coming back with a car, <laughs> and he say, "Open the boots, bring out the rice and the rest." You, you know. So that's the mentality. And so why would the man want to work? So we need to go back orientation to orientation. And like I told you uh, recently, my friend in the Delta State, the DG orientation agency, Eugene Uzo, doing fantastically well. But I wonder what the national is doing or why are the states not replicating the same thing? That, that's my, 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 my challenge. I am want to talk about the sense of entitlement of a lot of our young people. They just feel that they, you owe them something. Mm. Like nobody mm. owes you anything. You do what you need to do to, to shine and to bring something to the table. Nobody owes you anything. Mm. And this idea, I think this sense of entitlement has crept into our national psyche. It's become a culture. You go to an eatery and you want to, you, somebody opens your, the door for you and, and, and he's expecting. Sean yeah. Hey, Sean, Sean. Somebody stops you. Yeah, somebody stops you on the road. After uh, Happy Friday. Yeah, they know they can. They profile you. They know this one has all the papers. So forget it. Don't anything even ask. Say any anything. Happy New Month. Mm, happy so new you're month. wondering what is this? Mm. So really, it, it, we're, we're back to orientation. We're back to process. Well, we're back to beggars. you know. But isn't it all because there was an unequal <laughs> advantage given to some people yeah, that has true. led to some people perpetually totally. played down the water. So what else do they do? Mm. The best thing is this man has gone ahead. I'll just beg him for beg some, him. Yeah. and there's I, there's no shame in it. Yeah. Why would I be ashamed if I'm already? How low can you go? Can you go lower yeah. than low? Yeah. Mm. You know. So I I don't I don't blame them yeah. to some extent when they Nafisa. behave like that. But that agrees with you. But I stop them anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, I have a couple of things to pitch in. Um, you know, I mean to start first of all with um, exposure and hunger. Hunger, not in the sense that you're hungry, but exposure and hunger, those two are kind of like linked. Like, for example, let's say Ibrahim and Yusuf basically live in the same compound and they see the same cars every day. I'm sure Ibrahim that goes out to wash the cars, you know, without anybody asking him, he says, I see this kind of car. I want to have this kind of car in the future. Because I am at my current state does not mean I should not aspire to have this kind of car. And so he is exposed. And he is then hungry, or he has the ambition to at least climb out of his social status. And that's why he goes ahead, goes the extra mile to, you know, wash the cars. Two different people, two different people are exposed to literally the same scenario, but different outcomes. Right. So I think that's one thing, exposure then leads to hunger. And then on the side of this too, I'm going to come from the side of um, the perspective of apathy. In the sense that, you know, the Nigerian system is broken. It doesn't reward hard work. It rewards connections and influence and 
who do you know and how much money do you have in your pocket? So people say, you know what? I'm not even going to bother trying at all. You're already in a system that doesn't believe in you, believe in the capability and potential you have. Because if it did believe in you, it would create a system that will harness the gifts and talents you have. So they're like, you know what? I, well, it does no matter what I do, how many doors have I knocked upon? How many, you know, people have I talked to to give me a chance? And then you have an educational system that has not even profited, it mm. hasn't even taught you so much. So you're just basically at a disadvantage. That's where the yeah. ap apathy comes from. The right. environment in itself is not designed to even make you hungry to succeed in that sense. Spot because it doesn't spot. help you develop your potential and then activate it to benefit society. So just those three things, exposure, hunger, apathy. I think those Thank you, Nafisat. I guess that says it. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. 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 Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.